Okay, today I have uh, installed NetBeans 8.2 and I'm going to make a project uh, from scratch um, and it will be using the validation techniques that we've covered recently in lessons. So I'm going to click on this icon here that says new project and on here it comes with these options. Now if you do install Apache NetBeans 11.3 it will look a little bit different. Perhaps later I'll show you that. Uh, this is a lot simpler um, and it's just got these options here for me because I've not installed lots of stuff and I just want to go to Java, the top one, Java application and then I'll click next. It actually tells you here about this, create a new Java SE application in a standard IDE project. So I'm going to click next and then here, project name, no spaces, uh, I'm going to call this validation research. Um, and it gives you a location and a project folder and hopefully all those things will be set up nicely. Um, I'm going to deselect create main class. I've clicked on uh, done and it takes a couple of minutes, opens up the uh, standard panels which is projects, files and services. Um, I usually have one in projects like that and I'm just going to make it a bit tidier. Then this is the first time I've, I've run this uh, program, this ID on this computer. So we'll see how it goes. Um, it's got default package there. There's no files yet. So I've got a project. A project is basically um, a, an organization of folders, um, which will be used to hold all your different files or classes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new file. Okay. Um, here, once again, 8.2 is nice and simple the way it does it. Um, and I'm going to go straight in to a Swing GUI form. Yeah, Swing Graphic User Interface form. Um, the form that we use is the JFrame form. That is the main container that we use. It's not right at the top, unfortunately, but that's the one we use. So Swing GUI forms, JFrame form. Then I'm going to click Next. And here it says, uh, what's the class name? Uh, the class name, um, and I'm going to call this uh, form FRM. And I'm going to call it validation one. Okay. Um, and in the package, I'm going to call this validation. If you don't give the package name there, it will just go into the default package and they uh, suggest you don't do that. So there you go. I've only had to type in there and I'm using sort of camel case and here the package capital V click finish. And uh, we've got it up and running already. Okay, so this thing has got a, f a frame there, uh, good to go. Now, if I press F6, it will say uh, select the main class. And I'm going to have this as the main class. I've not made anything else yet, so I'm, I'm going to have this as main class. A lot of the time in lessons, we will go Shift F6, and it will run it. Shift F6 is fine just now, um, but when you're doing your your main project, um, you'll want more than that. So. I've got that um, frame there uh, and it's it's running perfectly fine. So uh, I'm going to go F6 and I'm going to select that as being my main class. So from now on, um, so that's run uh, nicely there. If I just click on F6, it won't ask me again and it will always run this as your main class. Okay, uh, so what are we going to do? We are going to make um, a really simple sort of validation uh, method using uh, this Swing GUI, okay? Um, now, I'm not going to show you lots and lots of stuff about panels and layouts. I'm going to make this really simple so that we can just follow it together. Um, so what am I going to have? So here, we're going to be drag and drop. We're going to do drag and drop with these uh, this palette of stuff here, okay? I've just installed this, and this is the standard layout. If you ever need to reset the layout, then you can go to Windows, Reset Windows. Loads of times people close this, and they think, how do I open it? Windows reset windows okay and I don't think there's any need to have any cool configurations or anything else okay so here's a finished example um, you can see that I've made previously and you could try to make this as well um, this is a little bit tidier because it uses J panels and so on to make it nice and tidy uh, but I'll just go through some of the basic components that I've put in here okay this thing at the top is a text field okay a nice simple text field one of the main things you use to get information from your user. This thing down here is a label. Labels can be used to help you label text areas to let people know what they're going to type in there. This one is used 
to provide feedback for the user. And then it's got a lot of buttons, just these buttons here, standard buttons, okay? Um, so just a standard button there, and these buttons will perform certain tasks. Um, so I, what I'm going to show you today is the, the um, validation, making sure that something is of length eight. So I've typed in password. I've, if I hover over that, this is minimum length eight. So that's a validation technique that we're going to do here. If I click on that, it says valid. Word length is minimum eight characters long. If, it, if it's less than that, and I click here, error. Word length is not minimum eight characters long. Okay, so that's the idea behind here. There's loads more of these um, that you can you can make and you should have made during the exercises that we've done already. So I'm just going to minimize that and we're going to start by making this thing here. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a text field and I'm going to stick it here. Okay, you can worry about sizing and so on later on if you want. Okay, um, I'm just making this a little bit bigger so you can see it. I'm going to go across here to where it says font and I am changing the font size to 24 simply so you can see what's going on. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a label. I'm going to stick the label down here and it does give you guides uh, on, on things and how, how far away things are and so on. I'm just sticking it there. Once again, um, I'm going to make it a, a slightly bigger font. I'm going to make this font size 18 just now so that we can see things a bit better. Okay. And I'm just stretching out there so that kind of lines up with the other one. We can do that more accurately later on. Um, and then finally, uh, I'm going to take a button. I'm going to stick the button below it there like that. And once again, I'm just going to change the size of this button, the font in it like so to 24, just so you can see it. Next thing I'm going to do is so you can see down here um, when, when we are in this view, which is this design view. OK, we can see these items here like this. If you go to source view, then you can you see them in a slightly different layout. So I'm going to go back to design view, which is really useful, this drag and drop technique. I can go to each of these and I've gone right click on this uh, text field, change variable name. And uh, so I tend to call them TF, lowercase TF. And I'm going to call this, uh, this one input with a capital I. Okay, so TF input. The label, change variable name. I'm going to call that LBL uh, info. Um, nice and short. The button, I'm going to change the variable name and I always call them BTN uh, and I'm going to call that enter. Um, obviously, if you had lots of buttons, you would give it a different name, perhaps, um, like val1 or something, button val1. And so there we have it. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is press F6 and just check that it runs OK. And yet that, that runs fine. And so we now have these components with appropriate variable names. Now the button, I'm going to right click, edit text, and I'm going to write length on there because this is to do with length validation. Uh, I've gone up to label, edit text, information. Now I've gone up to the text field, enter your text here, okay? Now, uh, this one here doesn't look big enough, so I'll just make it bigger like that. I'll stretch it bigger. F6. I, I do F6 quite frequently, so I can see how, how it looks. And that, that's fine just now. Yeah, this is just as we can learn about validation and how to get started with uh, GUI. Now, next thing I want to do is I need to write some code in. Okay. Now, before we do that, here here is the code that's already appeared. I'm just zooming in a bit. Uh, here's the code that's already appeared. I'm just going to take away that top bit. Um, and you can see that there's lots and lots of code that's been created. Now, a lot of the time I create these forms without using the drag and drop. In other words, I program them manually. I don't suggest you do that for the project because it will take far too long. OK, there is generated code in here. It's in gray. And that means that usually you cannot delete things inside there. OK, and you, you probably don't want to. Uh, so things that are grayed out, you're not allowed to uh, change those. Okay, but it's it's all good to go. It's it's uh, it, you can see it's got the uh, declarations for the components you've added as well. Um, if you want to add more components, you go back to the design and do it like that. But what I'm going to do now is I want to actually put in an event handler. I want to be able to type some text in here. So let's have a look at this. I want to type some text in here, like hello, and then click on length. 
and then if it's less than eight characters long it will say warning less than eight characters if it's okay it will say okay um, and that's what I want to do and so to do that uh, to make an event handler you double click on the uh, the button and you can see here I've got this button entered action performed and it's an action event um, and so it kind of makes all it, it, all this stuff's made for you so here you have got an event handler all made it for you okay and here I'm going to say testing uh, length validation uh, greater than or equal to eight uh, if you don't put comments in the in your code then it's not going to be great okay uh, so I'm going to declare a string word um, and here I'm going to make word equal to and it's whatever was in that text field and it was called input and that's why it's really handy to know it does say it down here if you forget but mine is called tf input you can call it whatever you want but sensible names and then I do a full stop and you can see here it comes up with the most likely candidates and we want get text and this thing will return a string of whatever was put in there it doesn't matter if you put numbers or full stops or anything else spaces it will return it as a string okay so um, that that returns something as a string um, and that's great um, just for testing purposes I'm actually going to use the console uh, this bit down here um, just to make sure that the program is working okay uh, and here I'm going to make it print out the word there down here so the console can be used for us um, just to make sure things are working I'm just going to uh, save that oh. uh, save that and then run it again so here if I press length it says enter your text here uh, in the console if I type tester then it's type tester there okay and that's great and then I'll, I've closed that and it's closed the program so so this thing here was testing only okay and it's the sort of thing that you would want to remove later on uh, but what do we really want to do we want to find out if it is uh, greater than or equal to um, eight characters long okay so I'm just gonna write if else uh, and then tab and that that's the way I do it that's the way I've, I've taught you to do it in the past and here I'm gonna go is valid len eight and then I'm gonna write word and you're gonna to say to yourself that's not a method that we've made yet okay it's valid len eight I've called it that just now I can't remember what we called it in the uh, the replit lesson is valid len eight word um, and if, if that is the case then we're gonna do something good so this bit here is going to be the success and this bit here is going to be the failure okay so next thing I do is I let the ID help me um, and it's come up with this warning here on line 78 for me click create method is valid line 8 uh, inside validation form validation 1 so I'm going to click on that and now what it's done is if I go right down to the bottom right down here you can see it's made this private boolean um, function I'm calling it a function because it returns something it returns a boolean variable okay true or false it's private it sets up to be private if you were doing that in replit you would have to make it public otherwise things wouldn't work okay but right now we are doing stuff in, in uh, NetBeans so this is great and that's what I would expect so um, what do we need and you you should have done this already we need to um, uh, here and I'm just going to do an if else again here if word dot length okay it is greater than or equal to eight return true else return false okay syntax error would have happened there return false okay uh, before I do that um, here I'm going to write uh, method to carry out length validation okay um, you've got to comment stuff up um, I, I'm not saying everything um, but you do need to comment um, appropriate stuff up okay 
not line by line, not every line, um, but just an appropriate amount. Uh, so here it says, if word length is greater than or equal to eight, return true, else return false. Well, actually, I mean, that's not a very nice, that, that's fine. And if you want to write it like that, that's fine. But um, here, the way I would write it is I would write, and the IDE has done this for me now, return word dot length is greater than or equal to eight. Okay, um, there's one or two people who keep on putting stuff in brackets like this, um, and that's not necessary. It looks a bit messy. Yeah, you don't need brackets. This isn't Python. This is Java. So there we go. We've got something that returns word length is greater than or equal to eight. So in other words, that will return true if the word length is greater than or equal to eight. And if it's less than eight, it will return false. So back up here and we're up here. And now this thing, this thing is fine. So here I'm just going to do a, a, a bit of testing here. So good and bad. Okay, and here I'm just using the console just now, and I'm just going to run that. And so I'm I'm running this and just testing it in the console down here. So, and it says good. And now here, if I test it with five items, it says bad. Really, I should test it for the border lengths. So seven is bad, and eight is good. Okay. And it doesn't care if it's a number or not. We're not bothered about that. We're bothered about the length, length of the string. And so that's fine. Next thing we need to do is change this information statement here. And the way we would do that is when we're at the good point, and I'm just going to make it say good or success or something, um, then what we need to do is we need to remember LBL info dot, and then you can wait a second, and then it'll be set text. And I just did SETT text. And then here we can write success, if you can spell it, which I can't. Uh, and then here, label info dot set text, and then failure like that. Though that, those aren't very good comments because it doesn't tell you enough about what's going on, but for the purpose of this demonstration, it's fine. Okay, so I've just run that. And here, I'm just gonna pull that back up here. And it's changed that to success. And if I make that seven characters long, which that is now, failure, okay? So, success and failure. Um, and and that, that's fine. So now we, we've seen a little bit of GUI stuff, um, playing with the action handlers, yeah, and so on. And, uh, that should be good to get you started. I will mention to you now that, so the, the version that I've got um, is this one. So could you make something like this? And you can see here the text is red when it's bad, okay? Um, and the text is blue when it's uh, when it's white, uh, when it's uh, acceptable. Uh, I've got all the different ones here for four and six characters. So, so that is fine, that is fine, that is not fine. So six characters is good, seven characters should be bad. Uh, the data types, checking to find out if it's an integer. Okay, a whole number, that's an integer. This one here is a valid float. And a byte, if you don't know what a byte is, a signed byte goes from negative 128, and that's valid. And if it was smaller than that, if it was, then that's not valid. And the biggest positive number you can have in Java as a byte is 127. If you make it 128, you can't. Okay, so it'd be good if you could make that. There's your task. Good luck.